Are you fragile? Are you resilient? Or are you anti-fragile? Throughout these Advent days, we are constantly reflecting upon the life of St. John the Baptist, who calls us to repentance. Neither of the feasts of St. John the Baptist, his birth nor his martyrdom, are found in the months of December, but clearly John the Baptist is the premier Advent saint. We're here at the St. John the Baptist campus of All Saints Parish, so let's just reflect a little bit on John the Baptist. Now, we know his parents were Zachariah and Elizabeth, they were older in age when they conceived him. An angel spoke to Zechariah prior to his conception. The Blessed Virgin Mary, after she conceived Jesus in her womb, as Mary carrying Jesus veiled in her own stomach, arrived John the Baptist in the womb of Elizabeth, literally danced for joy in the womb of his mother. After the birth of John the Baptist, his naming on the eighth day. We next hear of John in the desert. He was raised by very religious and holy parents. And John at some point made a decision to enter into the Judean wilderness and live a life of extreme penance. Historically, there is a group of individuals known as the Essenes who lived a very austere life of penance, of discipline, of prayer, right outside of Jerusalem. For those of you who have heard of the scrolls of Qumran, it's possible that John the Baptist lived with this very extreme religious community. And yet all this bodily penance, all the, the rigor of the desert, did not beat John down and make him weak. It made him stronger. And thus, out of the desert came John with his bold voice, proclaiming to all of Jerusalem and all of Judea to repent. And if you read the biblical narrative really, really closely, John the Baptist would have baptized tens of thousands of people because it says all of Jerusalem and all of Judea came to the River Jordan to be baptized. And yet, even after doing all of that work, John doesn't get more tired. John gets stronger. So much so that the religious, religious authorities begin to question him. And the religious authorities are clearly not for John. They're against John. So now he's dealing with adversity and persecution through, through religious authorities. But it doesn't stop him. He just keeps baptizing, eventually baptizes Jesus. After baptizing Jesus, if the religious authorities turning on him wasn't bad enough, now the political authorities turn against him. John the Baptist is arrested because his bold preaching calls out the king who is living in an adulterous relationship. The king has him, it has him in prison. And ultimately, the king's adulterous wife has him killed. But even with his death, the voice of John the Baptist does not go quiet. It continues to grow and grow and lead people closer and closer to the light, to the fact that we're still talking about him today. John the Baptist is a tremendous example to all of us about a desire that we should have, and that is to be anti-fragile. I hold in my hand a porcelain cup. Raise your hand if you would agree that this porcelain cup is fragile. If I were to drop it on the ground, it would break. What does it mean to be fragile? If something is fragile, it means that it lacks the ability to endure shock, chaos, disorder, variability, or mistakes. If something is fragile, it lacks the ability to endure shock, disorder, chaos, variability, or mistakes. If I were to take this porcelain cup and put it in this box, seal the box, and put it 
in the post office and ship it to a friend for Christmas, what will they receive for Christmas? Shards of glass. Something worse off and actually very dangerous. Are you fragile? Has our world made you worse off and, in fact, even dangerous? We'll move on from fragility to something that's resilient. So here's a hammer. A hammer is clearly resilient. It's designed, ultimately, to be solid and robust. The purpose of this hammer is actually hit pieces of metal and to drive them into wood or into the ground or into drywall. Something that is resilient is able to endure distress, variation, shock, chaos, and disorder. If I was to take this same hammer and put it in this box, put the lid on, and ship it to you for Christmas, what would actually arrive at your house? Actually, just the hammer. Because by the time that the hammer would actually arrive at your house through the US Post, it would actually break through the box. The question is this, and it's very interesting. Let's say that this hammer drives 1,000 nails. Let's say that I put it in this box and it arrives at your house without the box because the box has been destroyed. Has the hammer changed at all? No. In fact, that's why it's resilient. It endures chaos, distress, disorder, variance, change, but it does not change. We often tell people and compliment them for being resilient. And I will tell you, my brothers and sisters, this is not St. John the Baptist. St. John the Baptist was not resilient. St. John the Baptist is what is referred to as anti-fragile. To be anti-fragile is actually to go up to somebody and say, hey, go ahead and shake me. I'll be better for it. To be anti-fragile means we actually become better through disorder. That chaos, mistakes, criticism, and persecution actually strengthen us. That it's through being broken down that we actually grow and become something that we weren't before. Trey, come here. We know this most commonly as human beings through the development of muscles. This is Trey Werner. He is an East Central High School football player. This is a dumbbell. Notice how I said, this is the dumbbell, not this guy being dumb. <laughs> now, Trey, do some curls for me. Give me full rotation of motion. Thank you very much. Keep going. OK. Now, what is Trey currently doing? Now, we can say he's doing curls. But what is Trey doing? He's breaking down his muscles. Why is he breaking down his muscles? Because we know that the way that you grow muscles is you have to actually break them down first. The way that muscles grow is through anti-fragility. The more that he does this, the more that he breaks his muscles down, the more that his muscles will actually grow. In fact, if every single one of you tonight went home and committed to going home and doing as many push-ups as you can before you go to bed tonight, and as many sit-ups as you can before you go to bed tonight, and if you committed to this for 20 days, you would find that you could do more push-ups and more sit-ups over that period of time because your body would actually respond to the chaos, the disorder, the stress upon your body, and you would actually become stronger. You can actually stop. <laughs> now, 
If Trey was to never stop doing this, eventually his arm would break down. The key to anti-fragility is rest and recovery. You see, chaos does build growth. But there can be a point where there is too much stress and not enough recovery. As a coach, when I look at my athletes, individually, I have to ask myself constantly every single time, am I putting enough, are the workouts putting too much stress? Do they have enough recovery? Are they getting enough nu nutrition and hydration in their recovery so that we can put as much stress in the body without breaking them? The whole point of anti-fragility is actually to accept chaos and disorder, stress, change, so that we can become something greater. Thank you, Trey. This is not, at the moment, me giving some sort of endorsement of vaccinations. But what is the whole purpose, or what is the idea behind a vaccination? I'm actually going to take into my body something that will hurt me so that my body will actually grow back stronger. Raise your hand if you've ever been on an airplane. If you've been on an airplane, you've actually experienced the benefits of anti-fragility. The reason why airplane and air travel is the safest form of travel is because of anti-fragility. Every time that an airplane crashes, there is a total commitment to grow from the disaster. And thus, the airlines have become a tremendous model of anti-fragility. For those of you who are total nerds, which I am as well, some of you might know from Greek mythology. Who or what is the Hydra? The Hydra is the water creature that has multiple heads. And yet, if, if you cut off one head, what, what grows back? Two, anti-fragility. So my dear brothers and sisters, what about you? Are you fragile? Are you resilient? Or are you anti-fragile? In just 17 days, my brothers and sisters, no, I apologize, in just 18 days, my brothers and sisters, it'll be December 31st. I'll be a prophet right now, and I will tell you that in the next 18 days, you will hear probably more times than you can count that the year 2020 has been the worst year of people's lives. And you will hear people say again and again and again, I, can, I just hope that 2021 is better than 2020. I just can't wait for 2021. 2021 is going to be so much better than 2020 because this has just been the worst year in the history of all years. We can look at economic collapse. We can look at unemployment. We can look at sickness and pandemics. We can look at churches being shut down. We can look at people dying. And yet we have to make a choice. A choice that John the Baptist had to make. A choice to either be fragile, resilient, or anti-fragile. You see, my brothers and sisters, if you choose to be fragile, then at the end of 2020, you will be a worse person. You will not become better, but you will become bitter. 
and you allow the suffering and the chaos that is before you to not benefit you as God desires. Some of you might think it's great enough to be resilient. And you'll be like, well, at the end of 2020, I'm not any worse off than I was in 2019. I'm the exact same. I made out pretty good. But that's not God's will for you either. God's will for every single one of us is in the midst of trial, in the midst of difficulty, in the midst of persecution, in the midst of suffering, we are called to be anti-fragile. We are called to grow and increase. We are called to be strengthened. We are called to be something much more than we weren't just moments before. Every suffering in your life is an opportunity for growth, for strength, renewal. Every criticism in your life, every roadblock, every obstacle is an opportunity for us as Christians to become something that we weren't yesterday. We have been and we will be celebrating Mass outside, my brothers and sisters, and we have a choice. We have a choice to be fragile, we have a choice to be resilient, or we have a choice to allow this to give us the grace to become saints. What God has placed before us is literally a pattern and a model for holiness, for zeal, for righteousness. And John the Baptist is our model, but John the Baptist learned it from his cousin. His cousin who did what? His cousin who was born in a foreign town from his mom and his dad. His cousin who was laid in a manger. His cousin who was laid and wrapped in rags. His cousin who at his very birth had his life sought after by the king who wanted him dead as an infant. His cousin who was born in persecution and poverty, who had to flee to Egypt under the direction of St. Joseph, and his cousin who would ultimately one day die on the cross. And yet his followers who were not fragile. His followers were not just resilient. His followers who were anti-fragile. From an empty tomb went out and became something much more than they ever were. They were no longer fishermen. They were no longer tax collectors. They were no longer commoners. They were men and women who went out and changed the world in the most dramatic of ways and started the biggest revolution that has ever been known to humanity. And we are their ancestors. And my dear brothers and sisters, what will this year bring about in your heart, in your life, in your soul, in your family? Do not allow this year to break you. But take the time to rest and recover in the sacred heart of Jesus. Take your time to rest and recover in perpetual adoration. Take your time to rest and recover in silence, in prayer, in Our Lady, and go out and be who you are called to be, which is nothing but saints. This is the charge. This is the command that our Lord invites us to. This is the fire that built up in the heart of John the Baptist and made him the greatest of all prophets. And it's the same fire that's among us now. May we heed the call. May we hear the voice of John the Baptist who calls us to Christ. May we truly reflect, reflect during these next 18 days on what God has allowed to happen in his divine providence for a reason. And I believe he's allowed to have it to train us so that we might grow and increase 
and become something much more than we were before. Through God's grace, may it be so, and through God's grace, may this year form us to go out and to change the world forever. Amen.